Good morning and happy Monday morning to everybody. I just some quick announcements here before we move on. A couple of people pointed out that one of the good things about me splitting up my videos is that if you don't want to watch the real Royals, you don't have to. You can just jump right out of this video because that's what this video is about. You can go to the other two that I'm putting up, which have nothing to do with the real working Royals. Now, I will say they are in here because of something that they did that's causing something good for the royal family, so. Also, I'm trying to keep these videos under eight minutes long so that you guys don't have to watch ads in the middle of the videos. This is the whole, because people were complaining about the ads. So I said, we're gonna try this until the end of the month. You guys just bear with me, okay? And from now on, I will be releasing all videos at the same time together, and there will be three. There'll be no more than three. With that being said, unfortunately, this video is over eight minutes. Bear with me, let's go. We're gonna start off with Eduardo Mapelli or Edo, and his wife, Princess Beatrice, because they went to the Blenheim Ball in aid of Starlight Children's Foundation. They look lovely, and of course, thank you for the outfits, Remy Lod Sauce. Now, let me say one more thing. Several people have said they get tired of me thanking this person. I need to give them credit, so just so you know, in the future, he's got credit for everything I'm putting up, okay? Let's move on. Moving on to King Charles, he was pictured leaving Windsor. Uh, one of his good friends, I hope I'm saying this right, Captain Ian Farquhar, that kind of reminds me of Shrek. Uh, he passed away at age 78 while at Charles's Highgrove estate Wednesday morning. He was a very close friend of Queen Camilla's and uh, served as the Queen Mother's equerry. And I know he's very sad at the loss of his friend. Now, I know I said I wasn't going to talk about Harry and Meghan, but unfortunately, they're in this story because of their behavior uh, and a possible tour by King Charles to Australia later this year. They're saying that Harry and Meghan's antics have restored Australia's faith in the monarchy. How fabulous is that? They have long ties. This picture above is Charles at the Australia Day celebrations in London in 2011. Here's Charles and Camilla with koalas uh, in 2012 at the government house in Adelaide. And here's Charles when he was the Prince of Wales taking down a tree at a grammar school in Victoria. In other words, they have a long history with Australia and the Commonwealth. The point is when Harry and Meghan left, it, according to the article, instead of helping the Republicans, it helped them soldier their alliance to the problem-ridden family. That's the way it says, because it sh shows King showing duty, service, steadfastness, qualities that they admired in the Queen for 70 years. And those qualities were thrown into stark relief by the things that Harry and Meghan did. So there you go. They're saying that Harry's hypocrisy and the way he constantly attacks his family while still using his titles has not won him any fans in Australia. And that Charles and Camilla and William and Catherine are the epitome of dignity and tireless hard work. And now that the king has cancer, they're staying, even the Australian Republican movement sent good wishes to the king. So no, it doesn't look like Australia is going to be leaving, you know, anytime soon. Thank you, Harry and Meghan. Moving on. Next up, we have the Duke of Gloucester, who is the Air Commander-in-Chief of the Royal Auxiliary Air Force. He went to the Centennial Dinner at the Royal Air Force College on February 28th. Next up, we're going to Princess Anne, the Princess Royal. She went and opened the first Garden City's Holmes John Coxall Court, which is 71 two-bedroom apartments for people. You have to be 55 or older to qualify to go in there. This initiative, it's being reported, has freed up previously under occupied homes for use by local young families who need housing. Pretty cool. Now this place was named after the late John Coxall, who was the chairman from 1997 to 2007 when the housing association was known as Howard Cottage. Pretty cool. And of course she unveiled a plaque on her way out and then received some absolutely gorgeous flowers from some children. Love her. Next up. 
Now we're going to talk about Sophie. To start with, she and the British ambassador to Ethiopia gave congratulatory messages to the Ethiopian group CEO because the first Ethiopian all women's function flight to London landed. And they went and visited some landmark sites in London and they had a courtesy meeting with authorities and diplomats. Now that's women power, my friends. Moving on. Still sticking with Sophie, she had a group meeting by Zoom, I guess it is, where she talked about the importance of working together for gender equality in the Commonwealth. Let's move on to Edward now. On the 6th of March, he went to the Surrey Hills Community Radio in Leatherhead. Now, he chose a piece of music to introduce, and you'll have to tune in 9 a.m. Sunday if you want to know what it is. When he was done there, Edward went to visit the Free Wheelers Theater. It is an inclusive art company in Leatherhead, and they're all about fostering community and engagement and creativity. Edward did a lot while he was there. He viewed a display of tiny type photographic portrait prints that were recently made. He took part in a puppet making session by company member Nick Russell based on a Surrey Art Hill community celebration that was hosted by the National Trust. And then he went across the road to a 1,000 year old parish church to join a music workshop which is based on the use of modern iPad technology, which allows wheelchair users to create and compose their own music. I just love that kind of stuff. Go, Edward. By the way, uh, to celebrate his birthday, they gave him a cake. I just, I love that. Okay, now move on. Let's put Sophie and Edward together now. They were in Leeds, West Yorkshire for a public engagement because we know that Edward is turning right before his 60th birthday. That's right, Edward is turning 60. I'm gonna tr try to put this in order, but you know how hard that is sometimes. They were in the Headingley Stadium to attend the Sport and Recreation Alliance Community Sport and Recreation Awards. That is a mouthful. And they met some of the Leeds Rhino female players. For those of you who don't know, Edward is president of the SRA. He took that role over from Prince Philip in 2009. You can't help it. The two of them look so happy, so at ease. They obviously have eased into their roles and they absolutely love it. That's, that's, they're glowing. Edward was given a Leeds Rhino shirt with the number 60 on it because of his 60th birthday coming up. And of course, Sophie got one as well. After they received the shirts, they went inside, I guess, to go to the awards banquet. And it was at this point that Sophie decided she had something she wanted to say to everybody about her husband. I can't go through the whole speech, but let me give you the gist of it. She said, now I know from the many years of marriage we have chalked up 25 years in June, he will be horrified at seeing me up here speaking about him in public. And without looking at him, I'm guessing he'll be sitting back looking identical to his father when I used to make speeches about him. She said, and I'm quoting, you have to appreciate my father-in-law never liked anyone to pay him compliments, believing it was the organizations he supported that were important, not him. And Edward, she said, is the same persuasion, but she was determined to give you more of an insight to the man who I am so proud to be married to. She gave tribute to his work of the Duke of Edinburgh Awards organizations, as well as the charities throughout the Commonwealth that he works with. She said, if you looked through his resume of affiliations, you would just be shocked at how many of them there are, but that he's committed himself to all of them and he, he cares deeply for all of them. She highlighted his military affiliations and she's, you know, he looks good in a uniform, basically. She said, he has been my guide and shown me the way over the years. He has given me much help and advice, not always taken, I admit. <clears throat> and his knowledge and instincts that have been honed over decades of service are invaluable. And this is how she finished up the speech. She said, Edward was happy and humbled when his mother made him a Knight of the Garter in 2006, that Edward was delighted and moved the day His Majesty the King made him Duke of Edinburgh. He deserves both in equal measure, and I am so proud of the man he is. He is the best of fathers, the most loving of husbands, and still is my best friend. 
So here's to you, my darling Edward, and may I, along with all of your family and so many friends and many others, wish you the happiest of birthdays. Well, you saw the pictures. It drove Edward to tears, literally. That is one of the sweetest tributes I've ever heard. As I have said before, these two are so happy together, just like William and Catherine. They rival them, in my opinion. So next, they hand Edward a cake that looks like a tennis court. <laughs> so sweet. And uh, he cuts the cake and he gives it around to everybody. I just, I love these two. I really do. And I think Edward makes a really good Duke of Edinburgh. And we know who to thank for showing us the clothing, don't we? Now, I don't have any pictures of the next thing, but that night they went to the Northern Ballet opening night of Romeo and Juliet at the Leeds Grand Theater. Maybe some photos will come out later, but love the outfit. Move it on. Let's move on to Prince William, one of his Earthshot Prize winners called Notpla. They make containers using seaweed, not plastic. And um, William has been helping them get a deal to stadiums and entertainment venues to, you know, get the plastic out of them, you know, with all the food and the waste. And these pictures are from him visiting them when they were in production. So William went to the Kia Oval Cricket Ground and met up with one of the co-founders of Notpla. I hope I say this right, Pierre Paislier. This new deal is going to bring seaweed-based food packaging to over 50 sports and event venues. That's why the Earthshot Prize works. William was greeted by multiple officials, including those from Kia Oval, and he heard all about how this food packaging is going to work. It is sustainable and it's important at big events. And of course, William got to see behind the scenes, the packaging in action. They did a demonstration while in the kitchen of the stadium. I think that's so important. And I say again, this is why the Earthshot Prize works. This is really gonna help the environment. And it's, it's a major step forward. Now, when that was over, William was taken on a tour around the cricket ground. He met with some athletes who were there. They're training for the start of the season. He met ground staff who look after the venue. You know, he was busy. He was even gifted a shirt. But here's the part that really gets me. William helped broker this deal. It's being reported. And so because of that, they have been getting comments and the groups are reaching out to them from restaurants and they're buying up other plastic-free takeaway boxes from their website. And suddenly the business is taking off. William knew it was a good idea. He just had to help them launch. And he did. I love that. Way to go, William. All right, you guys, so as I said, all three videos are released at the same time, and this is video number one, so make sure you go find video number two and video number three, and leave those comments on all of them. Make them good. Make sure you've hit the subscribe button. If you've already hit the button, double check. Make sure you are still subscribed. Don't forget the links down in the description box, and if you've donated money to my coffee fund, thank you so much, and as always, you guys, have a great day.